When we use the stack to call procedures, we have a number of conventions that we can make use of that make a procedure call a standard operation. And we're gonna walk through those right now. Um, we can use the stack to store uh, parameters that we're gonna to pass to the stack and retrieve uh, return values from the stack. And we can also use the stack to store and retrieve uh, registers that might need to be saved, right? So for example, if we look back at our register file, we can see that some things like arguments need to be saved if we're going to mess with them. Same with uh, saved registers, right? They need to be saved if we're gonna mess with them in our procedure. Well, if we need extra registers because we're running out of space, or if we want to mess with the argument registers for some reason, we can put them onto the stack first and then mess with them and do whatever we want. And then at the end of the procedure, we can retrieve them from the stack and then they won't have been changed, right? This is callee saved registers, right? This is the save column. This means that as the callee, as the subroutine, it's our responsibility to save those few registers. And you'll notice that the return value is also, and the stack pointer, frankly, are also um, callee saved registers, which means if we're gonna call another subroutine, we gotta save the return address somewhere, we can save it on the stack. So we can use it for saving register values and for passing information, right? Um, we're gonna do this in a consistent manner that we're gonna call a stack frame. Every time we call a procedure, we're gonna invoke this frame, and this is gonna give us a standard way of putting information onto the stack and then retrieving it when we're done. When we do a procedure call and return, the assumption is gonna be that the stack is the same when we call jump and link as it is after we return with JRRA. So if you as a subroutine are gonna do some stuff to the stack, you're gonna build up a stack frame to be able to be used within your procedure, then when your procedure is done, you're gonna to have to disassemble that stack frame and return the stack to exactly the state it was in before the JAL. So it's really important to be able to um, undo everything that you do when you call a procedure. And that means that we can actually use that stack for more than just passing information and storing registers. We can use it for local variables and scratch area. This also reinforces scope really well because if we're the stack frame that we're in contains a local variable, then that's n there's no way that can be accessible by uh, other procedures that are not being used at the time. So this is, a, again, where some of these scope rules and local variable rules actually come from is their implementation on the stack itself. If you want to preserve a register on the stack, I'm gonna skip out a frame for a second. If you wanna preserve a register for the stack, again, you're just going to push it onto the stack. So proce procedures assume that all A and S registers are gonna contain important data. So if you want to use an A register or an S register, you need to push it onto the stack using this procedure, add immediate minus four, and then store word that register onto the stack point. And that just pushes that register onto the stack. And then when we're done, we can pop it off of the stack and retrieve it back into the same register we stored it from. <clears throat> so for example, if we wanted to push the return address and say register A0, we can push them onto the stack. And then at the end of the procedure, just before the JRRA, we will return those values to the registers we pushed them from in the opposite order because the stack again is last in, first out. So if we were to push the return address and A0, then at the end of the procedure, we're going to pop A0 and the return address. And these little collections of these sort of pairs of instructions, this is a push and a push and then a pop and a pop. The push subtracts a value from the stack pointer first and then stores a value. The pop returns the value and then adds to the stack pointer. They're all opposite operations of each other. Now, we, if we're going to be pushing multiple instructions or multiple registers, we can do that in a slightly more efficient way. Right? Because here we're adding, we're subtracting four from the stack pointer and then putting the return address there. And then we're subtracting four from the stack pointer again and putting the return address there. Well, each of these store words has an offset that we can make use of instead. And so why don't we say we're going to make space for two registers. We're going to subtract eight from the stack pointer. Then we're going to put the return address at the new stack pointer plus four and the uh, A0 at the new stack pointer plus zero. And what that does is it sort of makes it a slightly more efficient. We have 
a, um, I don't know if I've got an animation for this. Here we go. So we've got a stack moving right here, and we want to put both uh, the return address and we want to put a zero onto the stack, right? We can do that in two ways. We can either, we can have the um, stack sitting here and the stack pointer here. We can subtract four from the stack pointer and then put the return address there. Each of these, of course, taking four memory elements. And then subtract four again and put the A0 there. But a little bit more efficient is to have the stack pointer sitting here. <clears throat> subtract eight. And then put A0 here and put the return address here. This is the stack pointer plus zero the stack pointer plus four because the new stack pointer is sitting here. So that's a, <coughs> pardon me, a slight efficiency that we can use uh, that will make use of um, some efficiency. 